Prevalence of stone disease is quite common in India. It is around 10 to 12 percent in our population. So let's talk about kidney stone disease today. I am Dr. Vaidur Zaman, Director Urology and Renal Transplant, Max Super Specialty Hospital, Shalimar Bagh, New Delhi. Kidney stones are formed due to crystallization of uh, various minerals and salts and they stick together to form stones. Stone size may vary from rice grain to ping pong size. Symptoms varies. Even in small size stone can give excruciating pain while large stones remain silently. So size is not the criteria exactly when symptoms will appear. Symptoms may come in form of excruciating flank pain means upper abdomen pain that is radiating to the front or to the groin area and to the private parts. This pain is usually sometimes dull at aching to severe excruciating pain and patient is usually tossing on the bed. So severity varies from a dull aching pain to severe pain. So we should take the physician's opinion whenever there is severe pain. So whenever there is severe pain, we should take the consultation with your general physician. Then many a times these symptoms may be in form of nausea, vomiting, frequency of urine, there may be blood in urine. So these are the warning signs that something is happening in our kidney. There are many myths associated with kidney disease. People say larger the stone, more will be the pain. But that is not true every time. Even small, tiny stones can give severe symptoms while larger stones remain for years together. Sometimes we believe that taking alcoholic beverages or soda beverages, incidence of spontaneous passage is common. But if you investigate that, that is not true because this leads to increased sodium content in the urine and there is rather more stone formation. Similarly, people believe that there is, uh, if you take cranberry juice, there will be less stone formation. Cranberry juice is good for UTI uh, prophylaxis, but if you take in stone disease, there will be more stone formation because of increased fructose content. We should not take junk foods because there is increased salt content in that and that also leads to stone formation. Kidney stones are of various composition. The commonest composition is calcium and oxalate. Calcium oxalate may be monohydrate or dihydrate stones. It may be phosphate stones that is calcium phosphate if infected element is there. If severe infection is there, that may lead to struvite stones. Patients who are having gouty arthritis or lymphoma patients on chemotherapy, again uric acid stone is quite common. Similarly, if you take large amount of protein intake in day-to-day -day activity, again uric acid uh, stone formation is quite common. When patient is presenting with severe pain, then immediately consult your physician. The commonest investigation we do when patient present with this type of flank pain, that is we go for urinary examination, few blood tests to see the kidney function, ultrasound KUB is done to see where is the location of the stone and subsequently if stone is present, then we can go for CT scan like NCCT KUB is nowadays more popular and if you want to know the function of the kidney, then intravenous urography or CT IVP is done in most of the cases. Once diagnosis is stabilized, then we can discuss about the various types of treatment modalities. Treatment may be expectant management. If stone size is less than 4 mm, then in almost 80 to 90 percent of patients can pass stone spontaneously. We keep the, this group of patients for watchful waiting. 
If stone size is around 4 to 6 mm, then chances of spontaneous passage is around 50%. But if size is more than 6 mm, then chances of passage of stone of its own is less and it is less than 20%. So we should not go for watchful waiting if size of stone is more than 6 mm. But we many a times see other findings like if kid there is swelling in the kidney that we call hydronephrosis or hydroerotonephrosis, there is associated fever and patient is having severe pain, then comparing all these symptoms and investigating findings, we can even go for early intervention in a smaller size of stone. So size is not the only criteria to decide. If we are going for the expectant management, that is watchful waiting, then we ask the patient to take plenty of liquids and more lemonade, coconut water and avoid fruit juices because again there is increased fructose content with that. Similarly, we ask the patient to consult physician at the earliest, don't take analgesics over the counter because that may lead to many a times renal function deterioration. So you have to be careful over the counter please don't take analgesics and consult your physician. If you have got fever, severe pain then immediately consult urologist for further management. So further management depends on as we were discussing like watchful waiting or if size is more then we have to intervene there are various modalities are available nowadays that is either in the form of open surgery when the latest facility is not available still I think in a rural area people are going for open surgery. But in the modern era we have got now lithotripsy without any surgery we can break small size stones if size is suppose less than one centimeter we can break this stones and this is the outpatient department, easily it can be managed. If size is more, then if size between 1 to one, uh, 2 cm size, then either RIRS, that is retrograde intrarenal surgery is nowadays very popular. Because lithotripsy needs regular follow-up and people don't want this regular follow-up, they want immediate treatment. In that case, RRS is the best option, that is retrograde intrarenal surgery without doing any puncture in the body, any cut through the urinary passage, we can remove this stone with the help of flexible erotoscope and laser. It is available in most of the metros and this is the most popular procedure nowadays. If size is more than 2 cm, staghorn stones, multiple stones then PCNL is another option that is percutaneous nephrolithotomy and in PCNL we do small puncture in the backside done with the prone or supine position and stones can be removed with this percutaneous method. So kidney stone disease is very much preventable as well. So don't be disheartened, drink plenty of water, increase lemonade, coconut water and avoid all these soft drinks and reduce salt intake, reduce sugar intake. So you have to avoid definitely the junk food. Change your lifestyle and have healthy foods, more vegetables, fruits and but avoid fruit juices in plenty. You have to drink at least two and a half to three liters of water per day. That comes around 10 to 12 glasses of water per day. So. Definitely, if small crystals are formed, it will be easily flushed out from your body. Because if you see the incidence is around 50% of patients may present with stone disease within 7 years again. So prevention is better than cure. So go for prevention of stone disease, don't be disheartened and consult your physician and urologist in time to prevent any complications associated with this. Once diagnosis is established, then we have to decide when to see the doctor. 
when there is severe pain pain is not controlled with the routine painkillers when there is difficulty in passing urine blood in urine there is fever with chills then immediately contact your doctor and don't delay the best advice will be given by definitely by your physician and neurologist concerned